So now that we have the pub fully disassembled, this is what you would get in the complete air distribution system kit. All the components are listed in the back. But in a nutshell, you get the air valve spool, which is the one we took out of here. You get the pilot spool assembly, which is this one here. You get a new air valve gasket, a new muffler plate gasket, new air chamber gaskets, and all the necessary seals to rebuild it. So let's get at it and we'll, uh, we'll rebuild this one. So the center section, you're gonna get two new bushings. I will move these off to the side. You're gonna get two new bushings, so we can remove the two older bushings. Move those over. We'll have two new glide rings. These are the glide rings that go on the inside of each side to block air off from side A to side B. We'll also change out the pilot's pool assembly. So we want to push this through. So the easiest way to push that through would be to use the same socket just to break that free. So once we got that moved, we can simply take that pilot's pool assembly and move it out. So we, another easier way to do it would be to use a small socket and push that through. and change this pilot spool assembly out. Control spool assembly. Remove one O-ring. Being careful not to poke yourself. Remove the snap ring, the polyurethane O-ring. Taking the control spool, pushing that out. Removing the other O-ring on the opposite side. Then that will give you access to your seals that are inside your block. So what we did is we removed the polyurethane O-rings, the glide rings, and the retainer O-rings. We have all new ones that come in the kit. So we've got the polyurethane O-rings, two new glide O-rings, and two new retainer O-rings. So we'll start off with these O-rings first. What we want to do is cut these so that we can put them back in place. Push that in. Grab it, pinch it so it's L-shaped. Put it back in. Same thing with the glide ring. We can grab it, pinch it, put it back in. Using the blunt side of your O-ring pick, use that to get the O-ring back in place. You don't want to damage that O-ring. You can also use some needle nose pliers, bend your O-ring in a kidney bean shape, so you can grab that glide ring and hold it in place. That takes a little bit more patience, but that's another method you can do. Got the O-ring here, we got the other O-ring here. Then we'll take our control spool and the grease packet provided. Put some grease on there. And then in a twisty motion, you want to reassemble. Grease the inside of those seals. Grease the inside of these seals. You can put these bushings, the new bushings back in. Right. Take your new air valve spool. This is the old one. You take the new spool. Do the same thing. Lubricate the O-rings with the O-ring grease provided in the kit. Okay. 
Speed that up. And drop that back in place. Use a twisting motion as you put this back in to prevent those O-rings from shearing. Same thing here. Put this in here. Walk it back and forth. And twist. Use a twisting motion to get that in. Once it goes in, you'll feel it snap in like it just did. Push it through on the other side as well. Push that other side in. You can use the edge of the table. Push that all the way through in a twisting motion. And there we go. So now we can start putting the air chambers back on. Right? So we know we had brand new air chamber gaskets. Brand new isolated gaskets. These are the old ones. These are the new ones. Can we get rid of the old? Now these are mistake proof. So you can put it on either way, it doesn't matter. We mistake proofed the design on that. Take the air chamber, drop it back onto the center block, and tighten that up. Get all those started before you start to tighten them. Flip it over. Okay, so we can repeat the same thing on the opposite side. We want to set our air chamber gasket. Put that in place. Like I said, doesn't matter which way it goes on. Go ahead and put that in place and drop your air chamber right over the top of that. Then go ahead and zap them down a little bit with, this, with your air tool. Now we'll go ahead and flip her over. Do the same thing on this side. And once you got it all tightened up, you can go ahead and start impacting uh, down on that. So what you want to do here is on your control spool, go ahead and put one of the uh, O-rings on the end of it to stop it from going through, and then push that down all the way through. Then your snap ring, you want to put the snap rings back on the pilot spool assembly. So here you see a pilot spool. We'll use our snap ring pliers, the new snap rings that were supplied. Go ahead and drop that back in. Make sure that's sitting nice and flush. Flip it over. Do the same thing over on this side. Take your control spool. Control spool on this side. Put your O-ring on it. You may have to hold it up from the bottom to prevent it from pushing through. There. Now that O-ring is securely into the O-ring groove. Now we just have to put the snap ring on the other side. So we take our snap ring. There's two edges. I like to insert it with the snap ring square cut facing up so that it bites better, it holds on, and prevents it from slipping off. So in some cases, like this one here, the snap ring groove is not exposed yet because the air chambers aren't tight enough. So you'll need to tighten up the air chambers securely. So on these ones, since they do use a bushing, you may need to use another 916 socket on the other side. And once you get them on there, you can use your torque wrench, torque these down to 
14 foot pounds. That will prevent the air chamber from leaking. Failure to do this step will give you a leaking air chamber. it up in a crossing pattern. So you hear the torque range clip. And once you get everything tightened up, torque, then you're good to go. So what we want to do there is go around it once again, make sure everything is at torque. Last thing you want to do is build it all the way back up and hear it leaking and you have to tear it all back down again. Okay, so now that the torque is properly applied, we can go ahead and put the air valve assembly on. Like we mentioned earlier, we use thick, robust gaskets so let's take this air valve assembly out using that same bolt. Insert that through. Remove the old. Then you can replace that with the new one. Put a liberal amount of grease on these seals. Here's another tip as well. If the air valve spool, when you inspect it, if the air valve is still held up by the seal tension, then more than likely, your spool is still good. If it just drops right out of there and falls right off, this is bad needs to be replaced. This one didn't need it, but since it came in the kit, we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Just remember you can keep that old one as a spare. Same thing with this one. Give it a good amount of, of lube on there. Put that in in a wiggly motion, and you're good. In the kit, we also replace. We also have the replacement O-rings for this as well, so we can change these O-rings out at the same time. Same thing here. Give a good amount of lubrication to those O-rings. Then you can replace that end cap over. Okay, so you're looking at the air valve, you're looking at the exhaust side. You're looking at the air side. So what Wilbin did is we went ahead and we designed the air valve to be made that it can only go on in one way. So if you try to put it on incorrectly, you'll notice that it doesn't go on right. So it doesn't go on, it only goes on in one direction. That's what we call mistake proofing. So you can't put the gasket on backwards. It can only go on one way. You see the holes don't line up. Once you get your gaskets all lined up, right? You get your air valve isolator gasket on. You got your air valve assembly on. You got your muffler plate on and your air valve. Then you go ahead and just tighten up those last six screws. Now your air valve is fully on. Then it's time to put the diaphragm assembly back. So this is the full stroke Teflon. You notice that it uses the same hardware as our rubber and TPE fitted pump. So by taking off the outer piston, the primary diaphragm, and the backup diaphragm, we would simply change it over to the new one. 
Another way to look at your seals, if your shaft seals are worn, your shaft will just drop straight through. So those seals should be in there with enough tension to hold your shaft up. If the shaft falls right through, it's time to replace those seals.